All right, what's up everybody? Another Torno Swiss update for you. Um, we're making 440 screws for our knives right now. These are the little ones that go right there and there. There are seven of those on a Norseman knife, five of them on a rasp knife. Um, to do that, we're installing one, two, I think five new tools that we haven't used on the spacers. Um, Angelo's working on that right now. I'm reprogramming it. Maybe I'll show you guys a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, let's jump right in. So we have this beautiful Mayrat 60,000 RPM spindle. Oh my goodness. It's constantly got a little air purge to it. There's two wires going in the back. One is uh, electricity, one is air. Pretty sure it's an electric drive with an air bearing. It's constantly purging air so that nothing gets inside of it. Um, so we got these two wires with, I don't know, six to 12 foot of cable. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to route it. We thought about up and over, but that is the machining environment. We don't want it to be there. If we, it doesn't have to be. Uh, we got the back window taken out here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go that way. We're gonna go under. We're gonna go up and around. You can see where it is right now. Kitty corner over here, and then plug into our, uh, that one for air and this one for the power. We gotta protect these wires because we don't want them to go bye-bye. Um, the control unit is right there. I guess it's off right now because the machine is in e-stop mode. But this is where you set your RPM and you can see the torque that the motor is actually using. So you can tune uh, your cut recipes and everything based on that torque value. So we'll set it to 18,000 RPM, which will match what we did on the Nakamura, just so that the code stays the same for now, and then get it up and running like that. Sure, buddy. So to edit the code, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a wicked editor that I found um, through Autodesk forums or whatever. A lot of people are using this. It's amazing. Um, check this out. See how they're all color coded? You got your green for notes, you got your white for macros, uh, XYZ moves are in these colors. That is a, let's see if I can find it here, NC-G-Code uh, extension, which makes it that color stuff. And then I can choose that down here. That gives me a drop down list with all the different code types. So I've just got it in here. NCG code. Um, yeah, it just makes it colorful and cool. I like it. This is the code that ran on my Nakamura. I've got simple calls, pull out the material that much, some notes to myself, some notes for that. I've got the Renishaw Touch Probe on that lathe. So I've created a macro that says, if that's a zero, do not probe. If it's a one, or if it's a zero, do probe. If it's a one, don't probe. Bar length calculations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Turning probing, uh, the threading operation with the G92, etc. And then transfer and then all the milling down here with like miles and miles of milling code. What do we got? 3,000 lines of code. Um, so on the Swiss, it's similar but completely different. So the top of the code is like this. You've got some, some macro calls that tell you some basic information. You can pause the screen if you want to read it. Um, bar diameter, part length, um, whatever that one is. Pick off distance, so how far onto the part it grabs. Very important. So you've got three categories that you pre-do with every file. And I'll show you Tysis real quick. Tysis is Tornos's um, editing software. Uh, it's not a CAM software at all. It will not make code, but it will let you edit code. And it's actually really cool, because on a Swiss, you have the two paths. You have your left path and your right path, main spindle, sub spindle. And you can run them simultaneously. So as you scroll down the code, it shows you a weight code of M9000. Corresponding weight code over here, M9000. That's why the sub's not doing anything while the main is going through that, and then they match, and then they'll do both the initialize, and then wait, and then do this, and then do that, and then wait. And then wait here. And then machine together. All the milling, 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 milling. 
maybe I need to add another wave code or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but this is how you balance the work between the main and the sub so that they both kind of time each other well. Um, pretty sure here you can see your path one, path two. Path two on the sub side, milling all that torques is what's going to take forever. So I'll worry about that later. So I am creating the actual tool paths for the part in Autodesk Fusion, uh, just like I was doing on the Nakamura. So I've got a turning operation that comes in, drags across, and removes the material. You can see, I, for now, I have to make it from 3 8 diameter bar. So I can, the bar is going to look like that. So I'm going to turn, um, threading. You can see all the threading passes with your triangle tool. I modeled up a bunch of different size triangles just for testing. It's nice to see them. Um, but yeah, if I simulate this real quick, and see what it's going to do. It's not going to do that, but it did on the Nakamura. Here's the threading. I, I usually hide the, um, the, the material, like hide everything with a little light bulb up in the corner. It doesn't turn, like the simulation doesn't show the threads, but it doesn't really matter. What I really want to see is how close to the wall I'm getting with this tool. Got to be careful of that. So I'll basically output individual operations from Fusion, drag and drop into my template, and uh, put together the code myself. Or Tysis actually helps a lot with your spindle on, your weight codes, your tool numbers. So it works fairly well like that. I don't know if you can tell, but that live tool is spinning right now. 20,000 ripums. 20,000 and eight. Let's be real here. So it, it was, uh, I think it was M809. Okay, I'm testing out turning on the live tools and this is the magic code. I was missing that P value, which turns on the motor or something. 5103 turns on the live tools, 200 RPM, 51 applies it. Check this out. So they're currently spinning at 20 RPM. Notice how they're uh, going opposite from each other because the first one has a gear that feeds the second one that feeds the third one so each one as each one rotates the next one rotates backwards the next one rotates forward um, so that's why they're going that way so I'm doing basically the same code with a 200 rpm let's change that to uh, uh, s2000 alter now we have 2000 so if I cycle start that while we're watching, yeah, and then reset, should shut it off. Booyah! So a lot of today has been just um, testing these little codes, make sure I fully understand how to program it, how everything works, how to turn on every spindle. We got the high RPM spindle turned on. Um, I think I have everything I need now, actually. I have to put end mills in those live tools and zero them, make sure that they're concentric because I think it said it ships with no offsets. So I uh, just got to verify that, put tools in and wrap up the programming and we're good.